Hey there, this is Andrew, and today we're going to be starting this tic-tac-toe series, and I'm going to be doing it a bit of a different style, where I'm just going to pretty much keep recording and just do it as unedited as possible. So we're starting with a blank slate, absolutely nothing, and we're going to be building, like I said, a very simple version of tic-tac-toe using Canvas. And you're going to see me stumble around and mess up. And hopefully I can leave some of that in and maybe even cut some bits out depending upon if it's uh, educational or not or if it just takes up too much time. So let's go ahead and let's get started. So here we have Unity that I've just started a new project and I'm going to be using Unity version 2017.3. This shouldn't really matter if you're using an early ver earlier version or even a later version, but just making that completely clear. I've also reset the window layout, so it's, this is the factory default. I usually move things around, but depending upon how familiar you are with the Unity editor, I didn't want to you automatically look at it and go, oh, his is different. So I don't know what's what. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and sort of set up my project in this video. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to rearrange my window layout to how I like to work, and I'll maybe explain a little bit of why I do that. So the first thing I do is I don't really like this project tab and how it's down here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and I'm going to drag it up to the right and then I'm going to go to this little drop down and I'm going to do one column layout. And I like this because if you have a lot of assets, it'll have a bit of a nested folder system so you have a better idea of where things are in your project and it's just a, a lot better for managing a lot more assets rather than when it's at the bottom and it has a bit more of a thumbnail view and it'll cut off a lot of the names. Okay, and then we're just going to take the console and we're just going to move it right there. I think that's I think that's good enough for right now. And then we're going to go ahead and hit control S. And what this is going to do is it's going to save our scene. And our scene is just another word for map or level or board. It's basically what it is. It's just a scene. If you want to sound like a game developer, you refer to a level as a scene and you're halfway there. So I'm just going to name my main and hit enter. And I named it main because I only have one scene. If I have a few scenes, I may name it something else depending upon what levels I have. But in this particular instance, we only have one scene because it's a very small game. So I'm just going to name it main. And now we're going to probably just take a few looks at some of the panels that we have. So we have e the project right here, which is going to hold all of our assets. The inspector that's going to show us some of the details of our assets, our console that's going to print nasty things out when we make mistakes, which I make plenty of, and our hierarchy that's just basically going to have all of our functionality in our assets and all that cool stuff. And right now I have a main camera and a directional light, which we're going to get, be getting rid of in a bit, but we'll leave them for now. We'll spare their lives. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to go up to window and we're going to open up the lighting tab. We're going to go to settings and then we're going to drag that over and we're going to dock it right there. And I do this because I like to usually clear all this excess stuff that I'm probably not going to be using, something that's going to be used for canvas. We don't really need lighting when we're making something that's purely 2D. So we're going to go ahead and get rid of the skybox. And then we're going to go to our main camera. And we're going to go to our inspector, which is going to give us all the details of this object. And I like to just take the camera preview and I just make it white. And then we're going to go to our directional light and we're going to get rid of that as well. And then we're going to save. So I like to stay organized when I work on my projects. So depending upon what assets I have, I usually have a very similar file folder naming. So we're going to be making three folders and we can do that by coming over or if yours is in a different place to your projects window, right click, hit create and folder. And I'm just going to make my three folders that I'm going to be using. So we have all of our folders now. And then because we want to kind of break this down into its simplest form, we're also going to be clicking on this game tab, which is going to basically be showing our game when we are testing it. We're going to go to our aspect ratio and we're going to make it a square one one. And we do this so we don't necessarily have to deal with any aspect ratio issues. And we make sure that everything is squared up and good to go. And then we sort of expand that so we can make it reactive when the screen resolution changes from maybe a 16 by 9 or a 16 by 10. So if you go to square, you'll notice that our 
play space has essentially been reduced to a square. Now, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to go back to our, our scene tab, and this is going to be where we're going to be placing everything. And if you hold Alt and middle mouse button, you can sort of rotate around. We won't be needing to do a ton of rotating seeing that it's 2D. So we can go up here and we can hit this little 2D guy. So we're going to be building our project using Canvas. And Canvas is what essentially makes all of the 2D user interface objects within Unity. Before we used OnGUI, which was this awful borderline debug user interface programming, which is really, really awful because you had to type in particular values for the size of a rectangle and where it was on the screen. And I also found it very difficult to make it work with different screen sizes because you always had to take your values that you are moving recs around the screen and tying that to the current resolution that's being displayed. Thank God for Canvas because that's going to do a lot of the work for us. So the first thing that we want to do is go over to the left here. We want to right click. We're going to go to UI and we're going to hit Canvas. Then we're going to scroll out some more. So if you've noticed, this is also square and it's matching our aspect ratio of our game view. And the first thing that we're going to do with this canvas is we're going to come over here to the right and we're going to change some settings. The first thing that we're going to be playing with is our canvas scaler and we're going to be changing that to scale with screen size. We're also going to be changing our reference resolution to 600 by 600. And then we're going to be changing our screen match mode to expand. All right. And this is basically going to be serving as the base for our, our entire board. And if you notice, when we've created the canvas, it's also created this event system, which is going to let us interpret all of the mouse inputs, like mouse one and dragging, on our canvas elements. So you're going to need that. If you delete this object, this event system, it's not going to work. And if you can tell, event system, standalone input module, which I don't really deal with a whole lot. But so let's go ahead and set up our lines, or just even just the backbone of the visuals that we're going to be having. So the first thing that we're going to be adding to our canvas is an image. So if we go over to our canvas, we right click it, we go to UI, image, it's going to give us this cool little image. And if we notice, it's currently anchored to the center of the screen, or the center of our canvas, and it has a width and a height of 100. And what we want this to be is the background of our project. So what we're going to want to do is if we click this, it's going to give us all these cool little anchor presets. And if you notice, we have these shift and alt, which is going to set the pivot or in, as well as set the position. So what we can do is we can hold alt. And if you notice, the icons change. And then we, if we also hold shift, it'll also set the pivot and it'll have that little blue circle there. So what we're going to do is we're going to hold Alt and Shift, and we're going to click out. And what's that going to do is it's going to expand to its parent. In our case, the parent is going to be this canvas object. So now we're just going to select our image that we just created. You can either right click and go to rename, or the shortcut for that is F2 on your function keys. And we're just going to rename this to background, just like that. And then I like to make things a bit more organized. So I'm going to create another empty object below that, that we're going to be housing all the lines for our play space. So what we can now do is we can right click again, we can we create an empty object, and that's going to automatically be childed to our background. And when I say child, it's going to have this little down arrow. And it's going to essentially be attached to our background. And then we're also going to be wanting to call this lines. So if we just type out lines, and hit enter, and then we're going to do the same thing. For our anchors, we're going to hold Alt and we're going to hold Shift and we're going to click out just like that. And now we actually have to create the lines. So we're going to just make those out of canvas images because I'm just going to try and reduce the amount of assets that we need per project. So you can just primarily do everything within Unity and you don't have to download anything or deal with that because I certainly don't want to make you deal with that. And so now we're going to right click again. We're going to go to UI and we're going to go to image. We're going to click that. And there's an image there. It's just white. And as an example, let's just go to our background really quick and we're going to change our background color to a nice gray. I 
feel like Bob Ross sometimes. There we go, cool. And then we're gonna go here, we're gonna click on this image and we're gonna hit F2 again to rename it and we're just gonna call it line. And then we're gonna go to the rec transform over here on the right and we're gonna type in some values. We're gonna make this negative 100. We're gonna make the width 600. We're gonna make the height 200. Excuse me, 20, just like that. And if you remember, if we go back to our canvas, you'll notice that we set our resolution reference to 600 by 600. And in a game of tic-tac-toe, it's a grid of three by three. So each of our little cells basically are all gonna be a width and a height of 200. And if we go to this line here, if the center of it is going to be 300, we just need a minus 100 from it. Okay, so we've made our first line and now we're just gonna make the other three lines. So if we select the line we just created and we hit Control D, then we can go over to the right here. We'll reset that to zero and we'll make this 100. Oh, we'll actually make it, oh well, yes, 100. <laughs> and then we're going to just duplicate this again except we're going to be changing the width to 20 and our height to 600. And I do this because I'd rather have the dimensions than rotate it right down here. And then we're going to reset the Y to zero and our X is going to be negative 100. As you can tell, there's a pattern here. And we're going to duplicate our last line and we're going to make our X 100. Oh. All right, well, I think that's enough for this video. We've basically got a good start to creating our actual game. And in the next project, we're probably gonna make some of the, well, we will. <laughs> we're gonna make some of the scripts for, I think just the grid for now. And we're gonna be able to have a little, a grid with so we can place X's and O's in them. So hopefully you join me there. If you like this video or if you didn't like it, or maybe you would want it shortened or, if I didn't or if I missed something, please feel free to leave a comment. I'm I look at it every day. I'll see you next time.